Hello and welcome to the special segment called as MC Pro Select Talk of the Day. I'm your host, Nikki Virshandani, and in this segment, like always, we bring to you fundamentally strong investment stock ideas. Today's stock of the day is ESAF Small Finance Bank, Kerala based small finance bank, which was prioritized lending to the underserved bottom of the pyramid demographic, primarily focusing on microfinance loans. Its recent premium listing post issue highlights strong investor confidence in the inclusive banking model. The success not only reflects the bank's financial strength, but also underscores its commitment to empowering marginalized communities through accessible financial services. Now, why this company? Why talk about this small finance bank at the moment? Couple of things working in the favor. Let's address the first one, which is the strong growth profile. Now, the advances have surged at a CAGR of 45% over the past six years, showcasing consistent and solid expansion of this one. Even in the recent quarter, the growth momentum remains strong, standing at over 37% underscoring sustained performance. Despite being a relatively smaller player, the market potential remains vast, offering ample opportunities for further expansion. Moreover, there are currently no foreseeable obstacles on the horizon that could impede the impressive growth profile, at least in the near term for the company. The margins are stable despite worsening deposit profile. The deposit base remains stable, notably with over 89% coming in from retail deposits, showcasing a strong reliance on the individual customers. However, the low-cost CASA segment comprising of current and saving accounts has shown in a decline, dropping to 18% from 24% in the previous year. The institution portfolio is predominantly high-yielding and focused on unsecured microfinance, a factor contributing to its profitability. Despite the shifts, the net interest margin has remained stable at a healthy 11%, reflecting sound segment management of interest related to income as well as expenses. Now, a bit of blip there, the asset quality has worsened for a bit now. During the COVID period, there was a significant abrupt rise in the gross, uh, gross slippages of the company, the reported NPAs and the credit cost. However, a substantial portion of the necessary cleanup has been completed. In the quarter second, there was a notable surge in gross slippage, reaching 4.5%, accompanied by a slight deterioration in NPAs. The management attributed this occurrence to seasonal factors suggesting that it may not be indicative of long-term trend. This could signal that the worst impact of the pandemic on asset quality might have passed, but ongoing monitoring remains crucial for this one. Key risk where regional concentration, right, where there is a dominance of Kerala in the entire book to an extent of 43%. Microfinance dominates with a share of 73%. Let's talk about the outlook, right? Largely unsecured book, high yielding, but at the same time is also vulnerable to economic cycle. Second, there was a little, very little impact of RBI's recent risk weight guidelines. The target of reducing the share of microfinance by 4-5% to 5 every year is also one of the outlook that the company has suggested. It doesn't see any kind of pressure on its margins. Uh, and also, MC Pro actually sees a lever to ROA expansion from lower credit cost and OPEX. In fact, they expect earning CAGR of 65% from FI23 and FI25 and the valuation at 1.1 times its one year forward book value is at a discount as compared to that of its peers. Well, uh, MC Pro also suggests that this is a stock for risk takers. With this, it's a wrap. Thank you so much for tuning in.